it's Mrs. Mafuchi, and it's time to consider matter, its properties, and the changes it undergoes. That is a great definition of chemistry. Chemistry is the study of matter, its properties, and the changes it undergoes. As you're watching this video, it's important for you to take notes on the right side of your reading notebook. Well, what is matter? Matter is anything that has mass and volume. It exhibits the property of inertia. Inertia is the tendency to resist change in motion. What I mean by that is this. An object at rest tends to stay at rest, and an object in motion tends to stay in motion. You experience the property of inertia when you're speeding down the highway and all of a sudden you have to put on the brakes. The car comes to a stop, but you have a tendency to keep moving forward. That's why it's important for you to always wear your safety belt. Matter is made up of tiny particles that vary in their shape, size, and arrangement, and motion. And it's these factors that help explain the properties of matter. Let's now consider some properties of matter. The first type of property is called extensive properties. Extensive properties are properties that depend on the amount of matter in a sample. Some examples of extensive properties are mass, volume, area, and length. Anything that has to do with the size of the sample of matter is related to extensive properties. On the other hand, there are intensive properties. Those are properties that do not depend on the amount of matter. They depend on the type of matter in a sample, not the amount of matter. What are some types of intensive properties? Density. Solubility. Freezing point. Flammability. Reactivity. Intensive properties can be used to identify a sample of matter because every sample of a given substance has identical intensive properties. Well, now let's consider some physical properties. Physical properties can be observed or measured without chemically changing the sample of matter. In other words, the chemical composition is not changed. The first example of a physical property is conductivity. Conductivity is the ability to transfer heat and electricity. Metals are good conductors. The next property is insulation or substances that exhibit that property are referred to as insulators. Insulators do not transmit heat or electricity. Some examples are styrofoam, rubber, 
and plastic. The next property is malleability. Malleability is a property that allows substances to be molded and hammered into sheets. Metals are malleable. Ductility. The ability to be drawn into wires. Metals are also ductile. Solubility. Solubility refers to how readily a substance dissolves in another substance. Salt is soluble in water. Oil is not soluble in water. Freezing point, which is the same thing as the melting point, is the temperature at which a solid changes into a liquid or a liquid changes into a solid. The freezing point of water is zero degrees Celsius. Boiling point, which is the same temperature as the condensation point, and it's the temperature at which a liquid changes into a gas, and a gas changes into a liquid. The boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius. And lastly, specific heat, or heat capacity. That's the amount of energy needed to change one gram of a substance one degree Celsius. Water has a high specific heat. Another example of a physical property is the state of matter. The state of matter or phase of matter is distinguished by the energy and the arrangement of their particles. There are four states of matter. Even though this picture only has solid, liquid, and gas, we're going to also look at plasma. Let's consider solids first. The particles are packed tightly together. Solids have the strongest attractive forces between the particles that make up the solid. The particles experience low kinetic energy. Solids have a definite shape and definite volume. The particles can vibrate and move slightly, but they do not change positions. Compared to solids, the particles of a liquid are slightly further apart they have weaker attractive forces. They have greater kinetic energy. They have indefinite shape, which means liquids take the shape of the container that they're in. But they do have a definite volume. The particles can vibrate and they can change positions. This is why liquids can flow. Now let's look at gases. In gases, the particles are very far apart. They have the weakest attractive forces. They have high kinetic energy. They have indefinite shape and volume. In other words, the particles can move and spread out to completely fill their containers. The particles in a gas move in straight lines and change direction only when they strike the walls of their containers or bump into other gas particles. And now let's consider plasma high-energy charged gas particles.
Because of the high temperature, electrons are stripped away from atoms, separating them into ions. Because of their charges, plasma can conduct electricity and are affected by magnetic fields. The sun and other stars are composed of plasma. In other words, plasma, though you're not very familiar with it, is the most abundant phase of matter in the universe. Let's consider physical changes. We just got done looking at physical properties. What is a physical change? A physical change is when one or more physical properties are changed, but there is no change in the chemical composition of the substance. Let's look at some examples of physical changes. Melting, breaking, bending, cutting, crushing, dissolving, stretching, cooling, heating, freezing, boiling, subliming, condensing, any change of phase is a physical change. Now let's look at chemical properties. Chemical properties are properties that describe how a substance reacts when it is brought into contact with something else. How that substance responds chemically. The first chemical property would be reactivity. How readily a substance reacts. Sodium is a very reactive metal. Nitrogen is not very reactive at all. Nitrogen is a gas and unreactive. Combustibility. Combustibility is defined as the ability to burn. When a substance burns, it chemically combines with oxygen. That picture is paper burning. Paper is combustible. A word that you don't want to confuse with combustibility is flammability. Flammability is the ability to ignite and burn vigorously. Gasoline is flammable. Chemical changes occur when there is a change in the chemical composition of the substance. A new substance with new chemical and physical properties is produced. Chemical changes are also called chemical reactions. There are several indicators of a chemical reaction. Number one, formation of a precipitate. A precipitate is an insoluble solid that is formed during a chemical reaction. Evolution of a gas. When Alka-Seltzer is dropped in water, a gas is produced. This is one of the indicators that a chemical reaction has taken place. Change in odor. Change in color. Energy is absorbed or released, and the energy can be in the form of heat, light, electricity, sound. Endothermic reactions absorb energy. Exothermic reactions release energy.